Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the French Watch Collector channel. Today we have a very rusty and old Zenith watch as you can see. Uh, I bought this watch because I really like the dial uh, but the watch is in a very bad state. I don't know if it was at the bottom of the sea or bottom of a lake but look at the case uh, and even the dial it looks very bad. Uh, let's see what we can find inside this watch because the outside is pretty poor and let's see the inside. Wow, look at it. The movement is, is really weird. I never saw that. It's like green everywhere. It's not rust, uh, but it's like green. I don't know what it is here. Yeah? I don't know if it's be because of the metals that they use. It doesn't rust, but it gets this kind of uh, oxidation. But, but what's, what's uh, amazing, look at the movement beating. It's, it's very dirty and very bad state, but it's still working. Yeah? That's amazing. So let's uh, remove the movement from the case. First we remove these two case screw, holding the movement in place. Well, look at the rust around the, the, the case. I don't know if I will be able to, to remove everything or to get it in a good state. But yes, yeah, the movement as well is, look at it, it's so bad. Look at the blue on the, on the air spring. The gold of the balance wheel and the blue air spring looks very beautiful. Let's see if I can get it out. Doesn't want to get out from the, from the back, so I will remove the glass using a brushing tool, yeah? a removal glass. That's a claw. We come around and press the glass so we can remove it. There we go, it's out. Very nice dial. You see this finish on the dial, like a kind of a sunburst effect, like a silver champagne kind of dial. Let's push it through the, yeah, you see it's coming from the front, it's not coming from the back. You look at the, even the dial is, look at this kind of rust on the side and this green color. It's a shame because it's a very nice looking watch. Let's remove the hand using a version Presto tool as the main hand, the minute and the hour hands. There we go. And this is a sub second uh, dial that you can see, it's not like a centered second. So this second hand is very small. I can use, cannot use my Presto tool, so I have to use a standard set of uh, hand lever. I go, you can see, go underneath the hand and push it up slowly. There we go, now it's fully up. Even if it's still running, still in contact with the pivot underneath, but it's out. Okay, good, so now the hand I remove. Let's remove the dial. So let's see how it's, how it, ah, here is a screw. So the die fit screws that uh, need to be removed or unscrewed. The first one, the second one on the other side, generally they are opposite from, from, from each other. I don't remove them fully, these screws, I just untie them, remove the die and after tie them back to make sure I don't lose them. Wow, look on this side as well. It's weird, it's only on the edges, like in the middle it looks okay, but on the edges it's a blue-green uh, kind of oxidation, I don't know what it is, but it's very dirty, like, uh, but it's still running, which is, it's not running good, but it's still running, which is quite amazing. Okay, like I said, I put the, the screws back inside just to make sure they stay in place and I don't lose them during disassembly or washing. Just looking and I'm amazed by this movement. Movement is looking very good, but so dirty. Okay, so put the movement in uh, movement holder and we are going to release the power by holding the click spring and gently releasing the power by holding the crown. There we go. The power is out and the balance wheel should stop. It's coming nicely to stop. Here we go. Now it's fully stop. Let's 
let's remove the balance assembly. So this movement is uh, Zenith 2531. Uh, it's the first time I work on this type of move movement. It looks quite simple, but uh, quite robust. And you can see I cannot get out. It doesn't want. It doesn't want. It doesn't want to move. It looks like it's glued almost. Like I don't know why. Normally you put a screw or a blade underneath, and it will come up. But this is by just working. It's so hard. Ah, here we go start to move. Wow, we jump. That's dangerous, you see, because I don't want to damage this spring. Yeah? But look at the amount of oxidation that there is underneath. So that was keeping the plate glued to each other, like basically. Yeah? This is so dirty. I remove the pallet for cock, yeah. Let's see if this one is hard to remove as well. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's better on this one. It's better on this one, yeah. Okay, you see, yeah, it was less less dirty underneath. It's really around the edges where you have this kind of uh, blue-green oxidation. Okay, let's carry on. Let's remove the train wheel bridge. Okay, let's remove the screws. Let's see if this bridge is easier to remove. Oh, now this one is stuck as well. Look, the screw doesn't want to, normally it goes quite easy underneath. So, no, it doesn't, it still doesn't want to, to come, yeah? No, not on this side. Just clean the groove first, because you can see when I just pass through with the, the, the edge of the the screw, yeah, there is a lot of green coming out, and yeah, let's make it, yeah. Okay, look at it underneath for dirty days, yeah. That's unbelievable. I will remove the wheels, so that's the third wheel. Now the fourth wheel, that's a long extended pivot, that's where you have the second hand coming on the other side, and the escape wheel. Okay, so now let's remove the ratchet wheel, which look quite clean. The, the, wheels, the wheel itself look quite clean. Let's see underneath. Wow, that's not good as well. Very dirty. Let's remove the crown wheel. If you remember, the screw is, uh, is uh, the thread is the other way around, so it's. Uh, you need to turn in the opposite direction to unscrew it. Let's remove all the parts from this assembly. You see the parts are sticking to the to the bridge. Yeah? And I cannot remove this wheel because I left the cannon pinion on the other side. So I will have to remove it later. Let's disassemble the click spring assembly. Just remove the click in the spring. Everything jumped. Okay, let's remove the barrel bridge. Holding by three screws on this one. If some model you have two screws, some model you have three screws. And let's see if this one is uh, easier to remove than the, 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 than the other one. Oh, it's tight. It's tight as well. So let's clean the groove like I did previously to remove like if there is any sticky stuff. And you see, it comes easy after. I found a technique, yeah. 
Wow, look at this main spring barrel assembly. Very nice color. Very dirty. It's unbelievable. So this will go into the ultrasonic machine first to get clean. And we see uh, how we can clean it, uh, see if the result is good or not. Yeah. And this side is the same, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. Okay, put it in place, start to remove the hour wheels, that's the cannon pinion, which is holding the great wheel on the other side. It's friction mounted, so I use cannon, pi cannon pinion uh, remover tool to remove it later. First I remove this um, this plate. And I remove all the parts underneath, so the meated wheel. And now I will start to disassemble the keyless work. The parts looks in, are in good condition, but yeah, it's just. Yeah, I try to take the spring. This is very dangerous because it can fly. Normally, I use a bit of radical or another plastic stick to hold it in place. This is the same. You see the, the yoke. Here we go. The parts are really hard to remove with all this oxidation uh, around. Yeah. Just remove the winding stem, the clutch, and the winding wheel. Here we go. Only thing left is this cannon pinion. Like I said, I use uh, this uh, Presto tool to remove cannon pinion to make sure it's removed the proper way and the safe way. Here we go. Okay, so if you like the channel and uh, the video, please like and subscribe uh, this video. This will help me a lot and uh, keep me motivated to put new content on my channel. So thanks for your help. Yeah. Okay, so now we are going to start the disassembly. So first, look at the state of the main plate compared to before. It came out great from the from the ultrasonic machine. There is no oxidation anymore. Everything looks clean. Uh, so the, I cleaned the, the main spring barrel as well and the main spring inside. I put it back together. Uh, just make sure I use a bit of Rodico to clean everything uh, because this watch was so dirty. So uh, yeah, if there is anything left I will just uh, clean it a bit with a bit of Rodico but it looks much cleaner than what we when we had uh, when we when we open the watch. So I lubricate and un underneath the main spring barrel with a bit of uh, 9104 just to lubricate it there as well uh, the for the parts that connect to the setting lever. And now I can put the main spring bridge, main spring bar bridge on top of it. Look how clean the part is, like what's the difference? It's all shiny. You can see on the edge, like the polishing. Everything is everything is shiny again. And that's a huge difference. Uh, compared to when we did assemble the movement. So I'm really happy with that, the state of the movement now. Just put the three screw back. And this is very important as well. You need to spend a lot of time, especially if you have a very dirty movement, cleaning the movement, make sure that all the jewels are properly clean, all the holes and everything is properly clean. Or when you put the watch back together, yeah, it will go, everything will assemble correctly, but when you put it on a time grapher, you will see some strange reading and the timekeeping will not be good, so you need to disassemble everything again, clean everything, uh, and redo it, so uh, it's, it's better you, you do it right the first time. Yeah. So I put a bit of 9104 in, in the hole between the, the barrel bridge and the barrel arbor, put there around the post where we're going to put the, the click spring, just clean the excess because I put a bit too much uh, too much oil, 
so clean a bit uh, the excess because it was not put in the right place now here you go it is in the right place so we can carry on the assembly now we oil everything properly so we start the assembly by the crown wheel so I'll put a plate put a little ring around and before we put the wheel same again very important we just need to make sure it's well lubricated so put off 9104 around the pivot point and here we go it's in place and now we're going to put the screw on top of it to make sure it stays in place and remember one screw on the crown wheel one screw in the center is a reverse threaded screw so we just turning the opposite direction to screw it back in place anti-clockwise to screw it let's put a bit again of 9104 on the jewels that's a big jewel like big hole in the center we're going to put a great wheel so let's put it in place Again, use some radical because I see some some bits where I'm not happy. It's not uh, some some not clean. And when I put it, oh, it doesn't want to go in place. It need to go underneath the crane wheel, the crown wheel. Sorry. So let's remove the crown wheel. So that's important when you put the watch back together. You can take pictures or you can take video. That's a good way as well when it's the first time you work on the movement uh, to see when you when you disassemble it. So it will help you when you assemble it back. Again, the way it goes. So this is not a big problem. Like you just have to remove one wheel. But sometimes you remove you you assemble almost everything, and you found out that you did it the the incorrect way. And you have to disassemble everything again to put uh, one part at the right spot. So this is a bit frustrating somewhat sometimes. So you take when you disassemble, don't forget to take pictures step by step, or a video, it's even better, that you can watch uh, watch it back uh, when you assemble the watch. So okay, so now the center wheel or the great wheel is in place. Now we start to assemble the train wheel. First, we put the escape, escape wheel. Just make sure it sits nicely on the jewel. It was looking good there. There we go. The fourth wheel, go in place. With this long pivot, that's where you have the sub-second hand coming onto it. So this one is easy to put in place with the extended pivot. And the third wheel. So again, like if you don't remember the because each wheel is different, yeah. Uh, so if you don't remember the way it goes, um, that's the best way is to take, like I said, pictures or video when you disassemble the watch. And if you have any doubt, just go back to your picture or go back to your video and you will know to put it back together. Okay, so now let's put the bridge on top of it, the train, train wheel bridge. And you just need to make sure that all these little wheels are aligning into the jewels here. Yeah? So for that, I use a plastic tea on the top, put a bit of pressure and gently move the wheels until they all go, they need to go almost at the same time, they all go into the, the jewels here, which are with very tiny holes in the middle. So the jewels is like, uh, like uh, with this uh, ruby color, it's like synthetic ruby, yeah? it's not real ruby, it's acting as a, a pivot point. So the, the, the wheel will turn around in these in this holes with lubrication, so we put some oil there as well. And it's like the pivot point, and uh, they are very hard 
the synthetic ruby is very hard material not as much as diamond but quite close to it uh, so it doesn't it doesn't wear uh, so the watch can keep running for a long time is if it's lubricated properly so that's why it's very important that you do a regular man maintenance on your mechanical watch yeah. okay so now we are progressing like i said you need to be very slow in this and, and go very cautiously in this uh, part of the assembly because you don't want to damage anything because this is a, one of the most important bit of the watch uh, yes that's what will make the power go from the mainspring to the balance assembly you can see like the the last wheel doesn't want to go so just need to make sure it's laid down flat and oh, you see i push it down the plate went down and as soon as it go down looks everything is turning and i turn all the wheels are connected to each other and driving each other that's what you want to see okay so now everything is okay we can screw the bridge in place so to make sure that uh, everything stay in place correctly okay let's put the first screw let's put the second one jump the screw there we go now the screw is in And we can check by moving the, the mainspring barrel. Look, everything is moving. So that's good. That's what you want to see. OK, so now let's start on the other side. Uh, let's start uh, with the clutch and the winding pinion. So let's put some grease from 9501 on the tips that will be in contact between uh, the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. Just use a bit of Rodico and look again on this side. It's much cleaner than what it was when we took it out out of the case here. Yeah. See on the side, the, the polish side is polish on, on the edges. Uh, you remember it was like green, blue, like oxidation on the side. Now it looks much better. Yeah. So let's put the clutch in place the right way around because there is like different teeth on one side and on the other side. So you need to make sure you have the correct kind of teeth. Here it doesn't want to go. Come on. You just need to lay down flat in the, in the groove. This one really doesn't want to cooperate. Yeah? There we go. Now it's lay down flat. And now I can put the winding pinion. Everything is in place. Okay, now I can take my winding stem with the crown on it and I can lubricate the winding stem. As a bit that we come inside uh, the clutch, which is, a, which is a square bit that drives the clutch when you rotate the, the crown. And I put grease on all the areas that will be uh, in contact with metal. Okay. Let's see if I can introduce the stem. Just push it in, rotate it a bit for the square bit to locate into the clutch. Just align first, like, here we go. And here it is, it went straight in. Let's put a bit of grease. So again, a bit of 9501 in the middle of a clutch where we'll have the yoke later on, we'll put a yoke sitting in. Put a bit of uh, oil we're going to put a yoke and the setting lever. While I'm at it, I'm putting, uh, while, uh, while I'm at uh, oiling, I'm oiling everything. We're going to put the wheel and the can pinion. So the oiling is done, greasing and oiling is done, so we can start with the assembly, carry on with the assembly. Setting lever first, go in place, okay. Perfect. You have a little finger that go into the stem. Now I put the yoke around the post on, on this post and 
in between in a groove like which is in in the middle of the clutch perfect S sitting flat okay so now i need to put the spring so, so this is a strong spring that i need to put in place so that we come against the yoke i use a plastic stick and a tweezers hold it with the red bit just try to keep it in place and you see this is very difficult because you need to stay flat uh, and there is this uh, pin that's in the way uh, so i just try to make sure you stay flat and push it with the tweezer there we go now it's in place just make sure you lay down flat now it's in place Okay, let's clean any marks with a bit of radico. And I will use some uh, 9501, some grease uh, to put like on a contact point, uh, like the metal to metal contact point. Let's carry on with the assembly, so we'll put uh, the wheels. Put the setting lever spring. So it's only holding with one screw, this one. Doesn't want to sit flat, so maybe I will just put the screw and after, normally, you, yeah, you put the screw and after you arm the, the spring uh, against the setting lever. There we go the screw, just put the spring again. Screw it tight. Just try to arm it now against the setting lever. Here it is. Just put a bit of grease because this is again a uh, high friction point between the two parts. So we need to make sure we use some 9501 there. And look, when you pull the crown, you see it moving in a two position. Just make sure the movement is uh, all in place. And with the grease, it makes the movement as well a lot easier when it's uh, properly lubricated. Just clean the excess uh, grease with a bit of radical. And I carry on, so I put the wine pinion. Just push it down, it's friction mounted. There we go. And after I put the minute wheel. Yeah, that's nicely in place. Put the last plate, I keep everything in place. A little tiny screw. Yeah, the movement is uh, coming nicely along, yeah? so very, very clean compared to what we had before. And I would like to remember, yeah, I'm, uh, I do this as, a, as an hobby, yeah? I'm not a, a professional at all, yeah? this is in my spare time. Uh, I like mechanical things, so I work on watches, I learn a lot on, on YouTube, on website, in books. Uh, and by mistakes as well. So buy a lot of watches on, on eBay, like cheap watches on eBay, disassemble them, fix them. Uh, this is what I like about this hobby. So I'm not a professional at all. But yeah, I hope you, you like this type of video and maybe it will give you an idea. Maybe you want to start this hobby as well. So uh, I will share as many information as, uh, as I have. So for you in order to, to start the, this hobby and a pro or progress in this hobby because it's a very nice hobby to pick up. You are always learning new stuff. So this is uh, this is great for people who like to learn and like to solve problems. Yeah. Okay. So now I just put the the click spring and uh, now I'm putting the click in place with the screw.
Okay, now it's uh, now it's in place. I'm just checking that yeah, if it's coming nicely against the spring. I put a ratchet wheel on the top. Previously already oiled it with uh, 9104. Put a screw. This is a normal 3D screw compared to the crown wheel, which is a reverse 3D screw. So this is why this one goes a normal way. There we go. I just use this to keep a bit of friction with my finger when I tie it. Okay, that's done. So let's clean the ballast sensibly in a bit of one dip. I, I leave it in a one dip solution with the pallet forks to remove any kind of uh, dried oil or uh, dry residue which is on there. I will re remove them both and dry them one by one. So first the, the pallet fork, I dry it with a blower. So it's kind of a alcohol solution, so it dry up very quickly. It evaporates very quickly and very easily. Um, so yeah, you have the little stone at the end, so I need to make sure they are clean. Uh, so the same, I will use a bit of Rodico to clean the stones. These stones will have to be oil or grease, depending on the movement, uh, but this is uh, a very tricky bit that I do under a microscope, so I did not put it in a video. But uh, yeah, you need to oil uh, the stones of, of the pallet forks, yeah, especially the exit stones. Yeah. Okay, so now the pallet fork is in place, it's clean, it's in place. I'm going to put the pallet fork up on top of it. Just make sure it sits properly, like everything. You have two two located pins, so you need to make sure the two located pin goes, yeah. I need to make sure the pivots are aligned perfectly in a, in a Jules hole. So we make it move slowly. You don't need to use, you don't use too much force because you don't want to bend the, the pivots of the, the pallet Jules, of the pallet fork, sorry. Yeah, that's look good. Still, still moving. And after when it's in place, I like to sometimes to put a bit of tension in the mainspring and check if the power is coming to the pallet fork. But uh, first, you see, like it can be very long, and you need to stay very calm in this moment because you don't want to damage your part. You see, now I put a bit of power and it's rocking nicely, left and right. When you push it, just a gentle push and you see it go. So that means that the power is coming. So everything is good. The, the power is transmitted by the train of wheel uh, to the pallet fork, so we can put it in place. Okay, so next we clean the, the balance assembly. So same way, it was in a, in a one deep solution. We put it on an absorbing paper and we dry it. We dry it fully. You need to make sure not to damage. You see this blue spring? Uh, this is a very, very thin spring. It can be damaged very easily. So you need to be really careful. Okay, so now let's put the balance assembly in place. This is the moment of truth. It's uh, fully clean, fully dried up. So let's see if the watch wants to start. Remember, it was very dirty at the beginning. So at this point, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Okay, let's turn it. Let's drop it to put it in place. Oh, look, it already goes. That's amazing. It was even not fully in place at the the balance was already going. Amazing. And 
when you look at it, it's uh, beating quite well, yeah. After a while, it just by by eyes, you can see if the watch is uh, which watch has a good amplitude or or if it's beating uh, wrongly. Like, but this one is looks like it's really healthy. Yeah? So let's put the the screw first to make sure it stay in place and uh, it's beating the right way when it's in place. Yeah, that looks really good. So now we remove the jewels, the shock, uh, the shock system, we disassemble the shock systems. We start by the top one, we will clean it and uh, oil it, and we will do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I, I oil it uh, off camera, we uh, clean it in one dip and put some, uh, some oil. Put the spring back. So this is to protect the, that's the entire assembly to protect the the band staff, which is quite a fragile part of the watch. So this uh, this bit act as a spring, so it can move inside. It can dampen any shock or vibration, so it prevents uh, from breaking. Okay, looks like it's in in, in place. It's still beating good, yeah. Again, like I do the other side now, just uh, first remove the spring. Get the part inside, clean it, oil it, and I put it back. You can see through the hole, the, you can see is the watch beating on the other side. Okay, now it's nicely in place, so we can carry on. So let's put the, the hour wheel. Yeah, it's nicely in place. I unscrew the, the dial fit screws, first one and the second one, to make sure that we can put uh, the dial in place properly and after we, when the dial will be in place we will screw them back. Remember the dial was not very nice as well like with uh, green on it or like rust. So I tried to clean it as much as I could. So there is still a tiny uh, spot you can see at uh, 10 o'clock but the rest of the dial looks much better. Yeah? It's a very nice dial. You can see the, the finish and you, the light reflecting on it is, is very nice. So I screw, the, screw them back to make sure it's holding the dial in place. Okay, good. Yeah, this is much better. And now we are going to put uh, the hand. So first we start with the, our hand. There is no date function, so we can put it in a, in a random place. I will use a tool, hand setting tool, just to push it in place, push it flat, push it in, it's, uh, parallel to the, to the dial. Make sure we do, there is no friction, there is no loss of amplitude uh, when we use the watch. Let it turn, see if it's touching anything, now it's fine. And we will set it up as at midnight. And we will align the minute wheel at midnight as well. So be very gentle when you put it, this can be, some of the watch can be tricky to put the hand and to make sure that it stay in place as well. Now we are pushing it with the tool to make sure it stays in place. And again, you need to make sure it's parallel to the hour end, they are not touching each other. Okay, so now it should be in place. And last hand, 
the small one, the sub-second. So this is not a, a central second uh, mechanism, but a sub-second. So we push it to make sure it stays in place. It's like, again, friction mounted on the pinion from the second wheel uh, underneath. Okay, let's have a quick look, see if anything is touching. No, it's turning freely, it's not touching anything. Let's check at 6 o'clock if everything is aligned. Yeah, it looks good. So the hour end and the minute end are placed perfectly. So we can just set it back to, to midnight. Full loop. And it looks good. So now I'm going to remove the stem. You to remove the stem to put, uh, if you want to put the uh, watch uh, back in a case. And here is a case. I don't know if you look, if you remember the case at the beginning, but it was very dirty. Uh, some rust, some green bits. Uh, so I put it in a ultrasonic cleaning machine and it came out much better. Even if there's still some tiny spot of rust and the metal uh, is pitted, so the, the metal uh, was taken away by the rust. Uh, but yeah, it still it looks much better. Same, I don't really want to polish a watch and, and the holes are too deep. If I need to polish it, uh, I need to remove too much material. So uh, I cannot polish this watch. Just with a bit of Rodico, I remove the last bit. I change, you see I had a, a seal on the case back and now I'm just putting it back. I already put a, a glass uh, with my press in front. Okay, so now everything is back. I will finish to tie it up with the with a machine. And there we go. This is a finish product. Much better than uh, at the beginning. To finish, I put the watch on a time grapher and uh, as you can see, the bit error is quite low at 0 0.3. The seconds is quite good as well, just uh, gaining 7 seconds per day. And the amplitude is good uh, at 3 above 300. So yeah, that's a good result. So just follow me on my other social media, on Patreon and uh, Instagram for extra updates. I hope you like this watch and I see you next time.